and gentlemen, boys and girls, for all of you in attendance, welcome back to another episode of the 2911 Podcast, featuring yours truly, Brian McKithen. And Allie McKithen. And today's topic is... Seasons. Seasons of life. Like seasoning? Like oregano? Pepper? Salt? Hey, my brother-in-law told me, if you ain't sneezing, it ain't season. He didn't tell you that. I tell you that. No. Keyshawn. I guess you just don't ever listen to me then. Oh, see, here you go. And we are now into a season. So, uh, if I can ask you, what made you want to do seasons? It was something we were talking about in our last episode of the podcast. I think it was um, somehow friendships got friendships, relationships got brought up at the end of the last episode that we recorded. And I was like, dang, like that would be a real good episode to do of um, talking about seasons of life, how they change and how people aren't meant to grow with you through certain seasons. Ooh, yeah, that is that is very well. Um, <clears throat> when you said seasons uh a lot of things went through my mind uh, on a two-dimensional level i'm mm-hmm. like man seasons what's she talking about summer winter sp- spring fall why should want to talk about the weather for her? i said nah i gotta be a little deeper than that can't just be she want to talk about the weather you know lord was what's she talking about seasons mm-hmm. uh phys- in, a, in, a, in a physical aspect i mean i figured you were talking talking about uh people the people people in your life or maybe not even just people but the uh the emotions that we go through as in our flesh so you mean like hardships and trials is what you correct. thought i was talking about correct and then i just talked to the lord and what 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 else can it be three-dimensionally you know in the spiritual world in the spiritual realm you know what what could she be <clears throat> what could be progging her to want to talk about seasons? So then I think about spiritually the seasons that we go through, the trials that we might have to go through spiritually. So, like uh, I've said in numerous times with you, and I've said it once at least on this podcast, the scriptures talk about everything. To me. Not even to me. I just know that for a fact. The scriptures do bring up everything. So, ultimately, I said, man, well, how can I tie all three into one? You know, your uh, whether it be emotional seasons, whether it be uh, from a physical aspect of a season that you're in or going going into or coming out of, or whether it be a uh, spiritual season. You know, like uh, if you're being spiritually tested spiritually whether you're misled or being guided or you know you're being if you're being wavered in your spirit if your spirit's wavering and uh ultimately one of the first books that uh came to mind was solomon Mm -hmm. ecclesiastes uh chapter three Mm -hmm. i already know what you're talking about yes and god ultimately says to mankind there's going to be times for this There's going to be times for that. There will be times for this. And there will be times for that. Yeah, we had two completely different mindsets of where we were expecting this to go. Mm -hmm. Because when I think of... Maybe I should have said seasons of relationships. Because I didn't realize how broad the spectrum was of speaking on seasons would have been. So, And you're also very... uh, You you need to tell me... (laughs) And, and now, and now, everyone who's ever heard you say, "Well, Brian's so, you know, I can't just tell him skin the potatoes. He's gonna be like, oh, how do you God. want them? So do you let want me, them diced? Yeah, let do me. Do you want them sliced? <laughs> do you want them quarter cuts? Yeah. Do you so want let them me wedged? go. Ahead, yeah, let me go ahead and, and, this and tell is the this story. Why, because so to speak on Brian's personality, why he's saying this is because there was one time at the very beginning of our marriage. Where I asked him, I said, hey, Brian, I'm making mashed potatoes. I need I think I was dealing with one of the boys. I was dealing with one of the boys. I was like, hey, can you cut up some potatoes so I can make mashed potatoes? Emphasis on mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So women, I know my women feel me on this when they're just like, I don't care how you cut them up. Just throw them. So Brian's like, well, do you want them skinned or not? And I'm like, sir, if you like skin in your mashed potatoes, leave it on. If you don't, peel them. 
He's like, okay, well, do you want them diced? Do you want them quartered? How big do you want them? How th I'm like, they are going to get mashed. I really do not care, but that's also a quality that I do love about him, but it's also brought me to, if I am telling Brian something that he needs to know, or if I am going to ask him something, I come with all I's dotted and all T's crossed, because, and it's so crazy that God paired us together, because I, I do not like to be questioned. I really, it's triggering to me to be questioned. To me, I don't think you can question enough, um, but see... I'm not the cook in the house. You are. So my idea was, okay, how long is she wanting to cook for? I mean, I'm pretty sure if they're cut into smaller chunks, it probably cook faster, probably boil faster. Yeah. But is it, does it benefit to have bigger slices, even though they're going to get all mashed up? Like, and I didn't know if you liked skinning your potatoes or not. Like, so to me, I'm like, mm -hmm. if I don't ask and I do it wrong, it could become a problem. But if I overly ask, there's no way in the world this can be a problem because I'm only going to do it the way she wants it. Right. Right. But yeah, all of that to say, we should have had more of an understanding before we started this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I think this is good because uh, what I would like to do now then is attack all three spectrums of seasons. Start okay. Starting with the first, um, the flesh, meaning the, the relationships uh, friendships. Physical, you mean. Physical, yeah. So, within relationships, this is how I view uh, now. I, I'll say this now. My dad's... Somebody agreed with you. They said I, I thought physical when he said flesh. Th thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, my dad did a great job and still is doing a great job with all his children. And, man, all we have to do is call and he'll answer. Um, but I remember my dad telling me when he had, when we went to go live with him he i said some i said something about a friend and my dad told me be careful who you call friend mm -hmm. not everybody is intended and is actually your friend oh. some people want the title friend so that they can just befriend you to see what you're all about not every but not everybody is meant to be your friend because some people are only there for the ride <clears throat> and so i i start this saying within life and what I notice with God in my life life is just a big experience and I mean and I don't mean that in the slightest way I mean it like this life is like a movie life is like a book the people that you encounter in your life some people are only there and meant to be there for that one chapter mm. not everybody's meant to go to the end of the story some people do edify, build you up, and help you out within the chapter that you're in. And you're going to go through th some things with that individual. But just because that individual's in your life isn't a guarantee and isn't truly meant to be in your life to the end. And I think especially as a Christian, that's probably one of the hardest pills to swallow because what's so preached and what I don't want to say shoved down our throats because that makes it sound aggressive. But what people hone in on is, is love everybody love thy neighbor as yourself and a lot of people are it, it's hard to grasp oh i can love you from a distance family will be the first per mm. family will be the first group of people that test you in this realm mm -hmm. you are to love your neighbor neighbor you are to love thy neighbor as thyself but when your family is pulling you in a direction that you know you ought not to go do you put the love of god before the friendship or do you put the friendship before the love of god mm-hmm so you can if you being my or someone, my cousin or my brother or whomever, mm -hmm. if a family member knew me from my past and was like, hey, be Mac, let's go do this, knowing that doing that isn't conducive for my life or for my living or for my family. Why would I continue to keep that relationship I can keep that relationship at arm's length, mm -hmm. but why would I coddle and keep that relationship within my bosom, knowing that any given moment, I could be putting my life at back at jeopardy yeah, and, I think and costing everything that I grew in God with. Not, or not, with God, yes, ultimately, I, I can't never drop that, but for everyone out there who doesn't know or doesn't have that relationship with God, why would you jeopardize everything you've gained? for a momentary a moment 
and time mm-hmm. fixture. Yeah, and I think that's where um, seeking the word for yourself comes into play. Because when one thing that I really learned, because I was someone who where love everyone, forgive everyone, reconcile with everyone, because that's what forgiveness means. And whenever you teach that, you're not putting emphasis, you're not showing emphasis on that. You can forgive without there being reconciliation. And I don't mean there being forgiveness and understanding between the two of you, because there can be that, but there doesn't have to be a buddy-buddy relationship anymore. I don't have to allow you in as close to me anymore. And one scripture that really taught me that was John 15 where Jesus is talking about, I am the vine, you are the branches, anything that's not bearing fruit, I will cut off from you. And sometimes that is family. Sometimes that is the friends. And I always like to tell people pruning is not going to feel good. You got to think about what pruning is. When God is, when Jesus, when God is pruning us, he's literally cutting bits and pieces away from us that are not fruitful. So that way we can bear fruit. And it's up to us to have that discernment to see in people Are you bringing fruit into my life? Are you edifying me? Are we able to sharpen one another? Because while, yes, some relationships can just be there for a lesson, it's good to have discernment within the relationships that you allow in. You got to be careful with that, too, because this is why I wanted to start with uh, this is why I say flesh. If reading the scriptures, you find that Paul and Barnabas got into a, a fight. Disagreement. And Paul did not want Barnabas to be around him anymore. Mm-hmm. Because he, nah, hey, you go your way and I'm going my way. And you know what? For a matter of fact, I'm going to bring someone other than Barnabas. Barnabas, you go with, uh, who did he send Barnabas with? Man, now was skipping my mind. But the moral of the story is, if, if, if you want to find out, look it up. But Paul sends Barnabas away from him. Mm-hmm. And Paul was angered with Barnabas. Yeah. But then he, they did reconcile and Paul apologized for, you know. For his for his actions, but what I'm saying is, you we have to check ourselves as Christians sometimes, because we allow what we feel and what we think to dictate and in certain relationships, and it it can honestly be a it can be of ourself and not of God. So if you're in if you're in the Word and if you're doing as thus said the Lord. As you read the script, as you just cited the scripture, what Christ said to us, to to His church, to His people, that He is a, He is a tree, we are the branches, and those things that are not needed of us, He will cut them off. Sometimes we take things into our own hands that isn't of what God would call us to do, because we do own these fleshly bodies, and we do have feelings, feelings and emotions aren't a bad thing no you you read in the scripture god has love god has anger towards people sometimes god has these same emotions these same feelings that we were given it's not i think i told you this this week it's not truly what you do but how you respond in the season that you're in Correct. And I would never say everybody's meant to be cut off just because they've offended you. I'm just saying you have to understand the difference between those who are supposed to be there and those who are meant to be cut off from your from your branch. And like I'm saying, OK, so like I'm, what I'm trying to say is organically, if you are in Christ, God will show you whom to eliminate out of your life. Correct. That's why I said you have to enter them with discernment. Correct. So when you are faced with an individual Mm -hmm. and you're like, Hmm, I'm not sure if this should continue. Yes. Fasting, praying, those things help. But ultimately the scriptures say, you will know, you will know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Those who follow Christ, those who follow the word, you will know whom you ought to keep relationships with. If they're mirroring and if they're blessing your walk in God, Sometimes Christians can have a dispute or a disagreement and because you believe something different than I do or I don't understand your lane and you don't understand my lane or I'm jealous of your gift. I then find a way to you know what sister, sister Allie, I'm done talking to sister Allie, but that could be because I envy what sister Allie has sometimes in the church. We envy one another. So therefore we cut one another and, and 
push one another away or down because your gift isn't my gift and my gift isn't your gift, but I'm jealous, not seeing what God blessed me with. I'm jealous of what you have rather than focusing on my own talent and, and honing my own talent and being like, you know what? I'm blessed to have Sister Ali in my life mm-hmm. because even though I don't have her gift, God has given me my God has given no God has given her in my life for me to be blessed with her. It doesn't have to be blessed with her gift, but I I acknowledge her gift and I'm blessed to even have her in my life. It doesn't have to be that I I have to obtain what she has. Yeah. Because if the scripture says it's better to give than to receive, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're willingly giving of your gifts, and I'm willingly giving of my gifts and we become this harmonious friendship. It, it shouldn't be that I'm jealous of what you have and you're jealous of what I have because we're blessed together. And then when we get our celestial bodies, everything will become one eventually at the end of the at the end anyway. And if we're looking to the greater of the good, it's all really glory unto God. It's not glory unto Ali. It's not glory unto to Brian. It's really all glory unto God, all glory unto God, because that's your gift God blessed you with. And I have my gift that I'm blessed with. Yeah, that's funny. We just talked about a spiritual gift Sunday at church. That was the lesson with spiritual gifts and how we all have different spiritual gifts. But but as, as I grew up in church, I asked what I, I would I wouldn't say in every church, but I'm just saying. And it's not even in church. It's out of church, too. Man, when I was in the street, people, people, envy, jealousy, that is a big thing, in, especially in this society. Keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses seem, oh, that person got that. Well, I'm either going to get that or I'm going it, to, it's one of, it's one of three things. I'm going to go get it, too. I'm going to go get it, make it better. Or since I ain't got it, I got to get it off of you. I feel like you went on an envy and jealousy t- tangent instead of season. But okay, so and I like that you said that, and I kind of and I kind of did go that route because within 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 the flesh, when you're in your season, whether you're in your season of reaping or sowing, your emotions tend to sway you to act a certain way or want to, want to react a certain way. So. At this point in time, let's say I'm I'm in a season of, you know, of hardship. I don't know how to pay my next bill. Mm-hmm. I don't know where where my next meal is going to come from. Mm-hmm. So I tend to then say, you know what? God ain't showing up. I'm about to make it happen on my own. Man will always try to justify himself in his own righteousness saying, you know what? I have to commit evil to then to then make a way man always finds a way to justify his evil for good. Mm -hmm. And that's scriptural based too. man will always think his way is the right way. Read John. This is why when Jesus came, the scripture says for man loves evil more than than he loveth the light. And the light has come into the world, but the world didn't wasn't ready to to receive him. This is why the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all these seas, this is why they were so upset with Jesus. They their 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 anger came from a a standpoint of who taught you these things? Where were you learned? And who gave you the jurisdiction to say what you're saying? It wasn't it wasn't off a, an essence of him being right or wrong. They never said you're wrong. Why are you saying this? It was more off of you're tearing down our our traditions, our foundation of what and of what we believe is correct and what we want to do. So they became they got into a season of, you know what? We got to get this out of here. And uh-uh, he he messing up the whole game right now because we had the people swindled. Some people were illiterate and they came to us and we told them what the word said. We were able to swindle them, pull the blind over their eyes and they would do as we say. Now, here come this man making too much right out of what was wrong. Yeah. So so now saying that with me saying that going from a physical standpoint of, OK, 
your seasons. Like I said, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter three talks about seasons. You know, a time of war, a time for peace, yeah, a time for everything, a time for you know mourning, a time for you know rejoicing. Sure. Getting into the spiritual aspect, I know this is one thing that always, because I, I I don't really realize it until you truly say it. But getting to the spiritual aspect, this is one thing you always say bothers you. Whether I'm in a season of sowing or reaping, whether I'm in a season of joyfulness or sadness, I tend to never waver. And I'm I want to take this time right this now. Bothers me. I, I'm going to take this time right now to apologize to you because we were. I want to say we were. We're coming out of a season. And the one time, one of the one times I really allowed my emotion and anger to get the best of me and act out of character so i apologize for that but usually no matter what it is i never i never my dad used to tell me this when i played when i play sports son never let him see you sweat mm-hmm. and you you know how big i am in the sports and and i took that what i learned in a two-dimensional thing sports games whatever and brought it over to my spiritual life too Never let the devil see me sweat. Yeah. At one point in time, everything was taken from me. Slowly but surely, I've regained everything I once lost. And not only did I regain it, but it, it's it's here to stay. It's even better than when I once had it before. But even though I have it, I can allow I can allow I can allow enemies. I can allow I can allow the wrong thing to come to fruition or come around me, and I can lose it all again. I'm not too far from falling from grace. No man is too far. But as long if you stay in the word, if you show thyself approved, if you if you keep yourself humble in the things of God, you will know when those attacks come like, man, this is this is another day in the park, man. God ain't gonna have me in this season too long. I done beat this season thirty two times out of thirty three. Yeah, I had that one hiccup. This ain't gonna last that long. I didn't seen this. I didn't seen this little issue before. So getting into the spiritual aspect, this is why the scriptures tells us to stay, to stay in him. Jesus gives a parable about the person who has his seeds sown on rocky, rocky ground, about the person who has his seed sown in the sand, not in the sand, but on like on the beach. It's in the sand. In the sand. But then he gives another one, a person who has his seeds sown into soil, to good ground. Rocky times are going to come, you know, the there's going to be times where, you know, you're getting blown with your, with your every other way. But if we root ourselves into those things that are true and right and within righteousness of God, there's going to be no storm, no season to come your way that can, that can take you away from God. You're going to get tested. Don't, don't. Don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to say reading the Bible, staying in your scripture. I'm not trying to say you're not going to get tested. But I'm saying when that test does come, it ain't going to waver you. You won't be moved. You can't be moved. You can't be moved because you're going to know what to stand on. You're going to stand on. The... If you get a if you get in a season of depression, right, you start feeling, man, I'm not I'm not I'm not meant to be here. Nobody love me. Don't nobody care. I'm going through life all by myself. Don't nobody see my struggles. Don't nobody see my pain. I'll say I I, I ain't never really been de- depressed. I can't. I ain't never. I, and I I ain't trying to brag. I, I just ain't never really been depressed. Probably anxiety I've had once or twice before, but depression never really dealt with depression. I never thought my life was really. I mean, I've had you me. We've talked. I I just ain't never seen my life being depressed. But what I would say is this: if for anyone going through depression. If you really feel feel depressed, I mean, look at the look at the chapter, the Bible chapter and verse of what this podcast is uh, is named after Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. If you really think there's no reason for you worth living, if you think nobody care, before you came out of the womb, you were formed in the womb with a des a designated determination for what you ought to do in life. God knew. Whom you would be Jeremiah one five and Jer- yeah Jeremiah one five is yeah, also another good one yeah that's I knew you before or 
yeah before i formed you in your mother's womb and then jeremiah 29 11 says i have plans for you it ain't plans to hurt you it's plans to see you prosper so i mean in the from a spiritual aspect we go through seasons even as christians just like the world does you know we have our times where we're we're planting and then we have a times where we have a time where we're we're uh reaping from you know our harvest you know and this is just it's this sometimes your harvest isn't as big in certain areas like it might have once been but just like uh just like with your finances you take the good with the bad you save you put a little here you you financially be responsible put a little here put a little there you spread out your fruits you plant it again and, and you wait yeah, and I, I I really want to backtrack to you talking about the depression because I would say this is one thing that bothers me about you is okay. you can kind of give off that pastoral aspect of our old church. I'm not I'm not gonna name it, but our old church. And no, you never let your feelings show. You should never feel like this. The joy of the Lord. And I don't want it's gonna sound real insensitive, but yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it almost makes those of us, because I am one of these people who I I used to, when I was in the world, I was never emotional. And it's so funny because, you know, they say God changes you as you come to him. And ever since I found God, I feel like I'm the complete opposite of never showing any emotion. Um, I'm trying to find the happy balance because I feel like I went from one extreme to the other. Yeah. (laughs) But um, you know I'm about to get you. Yeah. So this is just encouragement for those of you who may feel the emotions you may feel like you're going through a season of depression it's gonna happen you may get discouraged you may feel like the world is against you and the world is against you because the world is not of god and you're not to be of the world jesus and there's said been times no that they hated me before you know that they hate and you they hate they you first hated because me. they first hated me and there's been times where and i'll share this in tough seasons of life i feel like i've been in the toughest seasons of my life for shoot going on half a year now i feel like it's been one thing after another for me personally and it got it has gotten to a point where i said you know what like like lord i need you to find a different soldier because i just don't think i'm as strong as you think i am and uh, and i and i just want to say that it's i don't want to it's okay to have feelings and it's okay to voice these things to God because only through him will you be, will you feel that he is sufficient. Only through doing those things will you feel fulfilled. And one scripture I've really been resting in is Philippians 4, I want to say it's 8 and 9 and it says for whatever things are good, whatever things are pure, whatever things are true, if there is anything of praise, meditate on these things. And so that's just encouragement because as Brian's wife, I because he tells me kind of the same things and when I when I vent to him and I'm like, "Okay, I get it, but you're like like Brian is a very strong-minded person." a very strong-minded person and a lot of us who come out of our old lives and into christ we, a lot of us come out of a background or a situation where our mind has been beaten down so much to where things like that are easily do easily affect us and i want to let I, I just want to say don't feel like you have to be strong all the time and you, and you don't but i'm a you're right i am very strong-willed and strong-minded and determined I'm going to share something that maybe only, okay, only you and I know. And then the pastors that we had at the, at, at a certain time, that the pastoral uh, individuals that we had. Okay. So when we first got married, and the funny thing is we both got baptized around the same time. We were in two different states. So a lot of things did, did feel uh, divine intervention, should I say. But when we first got married and we were, we were trying to figure this out. I, I would always say Allie's stronger than me. Spiritually, Allie's stronger than me. Maybe but, at that time. But <laughs> yes, at that time for sure. But I didn't say Allie's stronger than me. I'm giving up. And I didn't make it no, a de- I would never and, and I never up. made it a determination to be better than you. But God gave me you to lean on to become strong. Now when I understand my calling and what I ought to do, now I'm charged. And once I started to walk in what God charged me in, the, there's only one way but up. Now, I'm not I'm not saying I'm above any kind of, you know, falling. 
sin hits me like it hits any other person but what happened was i got serious about this walk and i started getting into it whether it was learning you know the greek learning latin teaching myself you know the scriptures you know uh dedicating night day uh any amount of time that i had so are you saying that those of us who struggle a little more with our emotions and feeling depressed are not serious about our walk nope what i'm saying is this when you start to feel less than i stopped depending and Mm -hmm. saying ali's stronger than me and started depending and relying on god to get me strong because there was no man that was in front of me in the in, in the flesh that could suffice what you and who you are or whom anyone else was my i was not to put myself or lean and depend on ali because she's stronger than me if Correct. i wanted what ali had there was only one person to give it to me mm-hmm. and that was god and if mm-hmm. i didn't want it to and if i did not want to feel the way i mean we're told you know Give every, cast all your cares under him and he'll take them, right? So yes. my care was, she's the woman, yes. And that's and it's not bad how strong she is. My bad. It's, it's not bad. It, it was a good thing and I had a strong spiritual wife. But I took that crap serious. Lord, if, you, if you're calling me to be the head, okay, the way I used to live was wrong. You show me then. I mean, the... And Malachi says, test me. So I'm I'm looking, I'm reading, I'm searching the scriptures. Lord, I'm testing you then. If you say I'm supposed to be X, Y, and Z, you show me how I'm supposed to be X, Y, and Z then. That's when the trials hit. And boom. And they did. Because then, you know, hey, you can go back slinging. Do, 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 do. You want to go. You know, and now and that then I was like, yeah. okay. And it, then, then it really hit me. And I'm like, dang, Lord. And now. Do, do I go back? Because now I'm asking for this. Or do I trust you? Yeah, and now that you say that, I'm thinking about the moment that my dad passed and I'm and I watching my dad literally on his deathbed. And I just remember and think and something I've been telling everyone since he passed like all I want is to have that same faith that my father had. Like to be literally staring death in the face and a few minutes before he passed, I mean like joy, just pure joy on his face and I mean mm-hmm. he's in riddling pain i mean he's mm-hmm. he's dying of cancer like i hear there's no pain worse than that mm-hmm. and he's joyful he's like man I- i'd love for god to heal me restore me here but you know what if he doesn't like i don't care anyways like i'll be with him and i i realize how much more intense since i've been saying i want that kind of faith how much more intense my internal battles have gotten how much more intense the things that I face have gotten. And and like my husband said, you know, I, I'm, I'm just as susceptible to sin as the next person. I'm just as susceptible to sinful thoughts. I'm not saying I act these things out, but I can't tell you how many times since my dad passed that I've said, I, I'm i ready to give up on this walk. You, you bring up your father. Your father's favorite book was Ephesians. Yes. What does Ephesians tell you to do when you're getting ready to go into war, a spiritual war? Ephesians 6. What does it say? The armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Mm-hmm. And it names your helmet, mm-hmm. your breastplate. Mm-hmm. It, it lists everything, everything down you to your need. Boots. I mean, everything the military still uses to this day. Even, I mean, we're talking about scripture that was written way before this modern time. And it lists everything that these people still use today. So that's what I'm telling you I had to end up doing to equip myself. Yeah. And and I'm not saying and anyone can be you got to want it for one, but anyone can be strong in the Lord, man, woman, child. The scripture yeah. says Jesus sat at the feet of those in the temple and and learned. So if the Pharisees and the Sadducees mm-hmm. really want to learn, he sat there and he read from the same scrolls. He listened to what y'all was reading. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Then he just applied it to his mind and his knowledge grew. And what I'm saying is it got it got to a point where, you know, what I had to stop saying Ali's stronger than me because it wasn't a contest. And no, it wasn't. But it was a Lord. I'm not going to get jealous of my wife because I need her to be strong. And you were strong for me. But now I got to get strong for her for the remainder of this marriage. 
And it's going to be a great thing because it's going to only be glory unto God because now I'm going to be able to give my son something, give my daughter something, give those who God puts in my circle something. But Brian couldn't stay a stagnant individual within his within his walk. So so that's what I'm trying to say for anyone who struggles. What I'm saying is I still struggle to this day. What yeah. I'm saying is when you find yourself in that kind of situation, right? Maybe you need to tighten the circle up. Maybe God's Those saying who are around you. you need to put like-minded individuals around you who are going to build you up mm-hmm. and look forward to the growth of yourself, not just for yourself coming out of the storm. Because what, what good does it do? Let's say you're in debt. What, what good does it do if you're in debt? You get money, you get a check or whatever the case may be. You get a good job. Now you have money to pay this bill, but you decide to set up paying the bill. I'm going to go clubbing this weekend. Now, God God didn't fronted you or give you the fortitude to come out of debt or, you know, come out of this storm. But as a this is why I say wisdom is an action. Wisdom, knowledge isn't just something, you know, this is what, like I said, befell Solomon. He had all the wisdom in the world, but didn't apply it. Yeah, it kind of goes back to our very first episode. What good does it do to read if you're not going to apply it? Yeah, it it takes me back to our first episode where we were saying, like, you have to renew your mind within all of this. And a part of renewing your mind to understand the seasons, to understand the trials. I think of James. I think of James chapter one. I believe it's in chapter one where he's saying, knowing that trials produce like how does this let me see your phone real quick go to the scripture because i hate to misquote and i don't like paraphrasing all the time yeah so it's james chapter one starting at verse two my brother encounter all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing that's not the exact one i was thinking of but i think it's because i recently read it and you know these tests and these trials they produce all these things in us that we're seeking that we're wanting to grow in god from of that we're wanting to grow on in god i think that's how you should say that (laughs) right (laughs) man i'm teaching my kids grammar and i don't even know grammar but um yeah that's i think that's been one of my biggest lessons you know, you can, I, I think I've been someone where I'm like, man, surely I'm not going to face something else that's going to make me question my walk again. Surely. And I can't tell you how every month, every, literally every month, there's at least one thing that happens where I'm like, why? Why? Why me? And I voiced something to my husband today and I never regret or I don't want to say I never It's very rare that I voice something to my husband or that I cry out to God about something that I don't regret because God will usually, oh, not usually, he always shows me this is why, this is why. And my husband first taught me this where he was like, why not you? Mm -hmm. Why not you? Like the platforms you have, the voice you have, the way people look up to you, the way people come to you, like why not? God test your faith knowing you're a faithful servant and I never saw it like that literally till this very moment that I'm saying this like why not me and it gets hard and today I voice to my husband you know like I'm tired of asking why not me because I'm ready to tell God like pick somebody else have y'all seen (laughs) y'all know that TikTok that's like "Mm -mm, pick somebody else pick somebody else I'm not addressing this crowd today pick somebody else you know like that's how I've been feeling (laughs) and since I was a kid I still don't I don't I don't think I'm ready and I don't know if I'll ever be ready I hope I don't run but I like just told you the other night when we're talking about Jonah I used to always be like Lord I want to be just like Jonah in the aspect of Lord I ain't going in Nineveh and telling them folks nothing if they don't know they left from their right send the next guy I, I wanted to be like um who was someone else always pray? I wanted to be like Solomon. I I just wanted the wisdom. I never wanted to apply it. And it's crazy how God's moved me to be like, have, I don't want to say be like, I have characteristic traits of of those individuals and and others, but I'm not doing what Mm -hmm. I I, I wanted to do ultimately. You know, I mean, I I haven't given a sermon truly. I do like teaching though. I, I do love teaching. Yeah. But, um, I think you like teaching a specific group, though. 
True. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Especially when I can just like Because it's like down. for me, I don't like teaching teenage girls. I really don't. See, and my thing was this. <laughs> I like teaching women I, my age. I like teenagers to young 20s, like young adults, like maybe tops 25, 26. Because I know the resources and the uh, time that was put in me. And mm-hmm. I let that squander. Uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 I say we I squan- like, I, I, say- I, I, I mean, it's still here because yeah. I call my dad. You, you're there. I call my dad and I, and I can recite. I can recite things that happened over a decade and a half ago. Man, that sounds crazy. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can recite things that are almost two decades old. And it's like, man, dad, you remember? Woo? And he just started laughing. I said, man, yeah, yeah. I need to put that into somebody else now. I need to, you know, yeah, I'm going to put it in, in Ethan Bryson, Brian King, Anaya, and if, you know, if we have another child, it, I'm going to put that in them. Yeah. But Definitely. For, for the youth that's out here now, for the young adults that are right here right now, until, you know, I, I have that passion for that age group because, man, if, if I don't, and this is where I got it from, if Brother Wilbur didn't do it for me, who would have? If pastor riddle didn't do that for me then who would have you know pastor harris if miss harris didn't do that for brian defoe mckithen who would have my dad and your whole government out there boy. It, it, i don't care what the, ain't gonna get nothing off of me <laughs> it, the military better do their job va better do their job and keep myself locked down <laughs> no but <laughs> if it, 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 and, and i credit it to my father I credit it to my grandmother in, in in some sense i credit to all the guardians i had throughout my life that put good people around me in church and and these individuals would mold me and 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 they and they they were doing their best to say hey young man and just how i am hey look you you can be goofy you can play woo 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 but what you gonna do when life really come at yeah. knocking on your door? Yeah. Like how I am. Yeah, we can we can joke around, we can josh. Yeah, we can be joning, we can be joshing. Okay, but outside of that, you know, what you what you real like like I do with with, with our nephew Zane. Yeah, that's cool. But now, dude, you about three years removed from now becoming your own man. It's cool to you know like cars, like girls, but what trade you gonna get? What you what you really want to learn? Let, like, let's really think about this because you're going to be coming you're going to start becoming into your own you, you know, really start to become your own man what you want to do with life before life grab you you better start grabbing things and put, start putting things in, into perspective before, before life just grabs you and then you looking up and you're 27 and you man where, still where you are when you were in high school yeah where am I at I, I didn't let the video game take and that's the problem with a lot of men Video games ain't bad. I, should, I like to tell you, I play video games. But when the video game consumes your life and, and everything, yeah. you man, put the game down and start doing something positive. Man, Definitely. I love like I love my brother, my brother in law Sergio. Man, that man ain't he don't know nothing about no video games. But he'll tell you how to start a job. Man, we can go cut these yards. Hey, look, we can start moving these people's houses. We can get on this. We can get on that. We can you know get into any kind of venture that's gonna produce something. In a man, he he all for that. Yeah, they're gonna be time for and, and get back to Ecclesiastes. They're gonna be time for the games, but right now we we dealing with real life. What, what we gonna do right now, you know, to to not get back in this situation? And if we get back in the situation, we set because we didn't saved, we didn't plan, we we didn't did something about it from the first time when getting ourselves in this situation. You no, know, thank God for the knowledge that He put in us. Not, it's one thing to know the truth about something, but it's one thing to know the knowledge and, like I said, have the wisdom to do the action to prevent yourself. It's like this: when Texas had, when we had that winter storm, what a year or two ago? Yeah. What did we do? When to go buy the generator? When to go stock up on some food? What mm-hmm. good would it have been to go through a season in life and then come out of that season of life and not start planning and gearing up? You know what? What are we yeah. gonna do if another winter storm comes? Right, and that's and th- that's a good example as to why paying attention to the season that you're going through is so important. What am I going to take away from this? Because one thing I've learned is that the enemy doesn't learn new tricks. He doesn't learn new tricks yeah. on how to attack His you. His tricks is old as day. 
he may they may be a little more intense but he it they eventually get to the point to where you can recognize ah it's his season to put me through this season i i'm gonna get it real personal there's sometimes ali i feel like you want me to be wavered and i'd be like and this is what i was getting at earlier there's times where you're like i can tell and i can see that something is bothering you and i'll and I'll love love on you from a distance usually, and I'll let you go through it. But uh, I'm just I'm gonna stay strong, and I'm and I'm already mapping out. Okay, this is what we are gonna do. And then you you'll you'll be frustrated, and then we'll we'll go through it. And then you'll be like, why weren't you mad? It was no it was no need for me to get. <laughs> so we gonna be two mad individuals getting what accomplished? Nah, shorty, not gonna do that. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my little pit bull I'm gonna let my little pit bull get mad. Like I I'll be telling everybody at my job, don't make me get my pit bull on you. But I'm gonna, <laughs> let, I'm gonna let my little pit bull get aggressive. I'm gonna let her get charged up. And then I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna rub her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ease her pain. Okay. Mm. Hey, look, this is what's gonna happen. I don't know. All right, babe. That's cool. Watch and see. You know. Because sometimes, and I think this is a problem. And maybe I should I should tell you, you no, know, babe. I've been praying, and this is what I believe God's going to get ready for us. Sometimes it does yeah. come off. This is what Brian wants to it's do. It comes or off this so is what Brian's dis- saying, right? Oh, this is just Brian. Nah, I, I've been praying on it. I, I hear you. I see what's going on. Just because I and I think I think a lot of people, a lot of people know me. Think, I, yeah, Brian's Brian's I mean, one thing. He going to take care of it. He going to take care of everyone. Nothing going to pop off around him, but. He's just a big, playful individual. Is he ever serious? Mm-hmm. And then when I, because I joke so much, most people don't know when I'm serious. And then they'd be like, dang, you was right about, oh, you thought I was playing. No, I wasn't playing. I was for real. <laughs> I don't waste my breath. I, I, I feel like every word is valid and every word it needs to be used in, in its own proper context. So, you know, when I told you, because you asked me, you know, yeah, I, I play around a lot, but I meant what I said. Yeah, most definitely. Sticking on spiritual, I'm going to get to the meat? man, to a meat. Because uh, I think I I think I think used to, me and Ryan, me and my brother, man, growing up, I would only say this to Ryan, really. But I used to, I, I, have, I have a lot of cousins. And I'm not, I didn't really grow up around my dad's side, but my mom's side. I look at them and I'll be like, man, how they... Why are we going through it, boy? And and I, I guess I can say it was a little jealousy because I was a child. But I'm like, man, they got X, Y, and Z. Man, why? I'm like, man, Lord, when are we going? When are we going to get man? We something? I'm like, we think that now because I'm like, we don't do anything but try to do right by everyone, and that's whenever I'm get. That's whenever I get like, why? Why us? Like, and and then I sit back and I look and I'm like, man, if I got if I had all the handouts that everyone else had around me i sure wouldn't be where i am right because i would have freaking took them handouts and flipped all of them right i used to be like man and this is the thing i'm and now and now as i say it i'm i'm i wasn't even grateful and i see what my dad did what he did to me and ryan that day but uh growing up i would be like man they're getting this game that game this console that console this that and the third and i was like when is it gonna be brian ryan and brianna sir you know what i mean God and, knew. And, 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 and little did I know, in just a matter, man, what felt forever was really just a couple of years. I mean, when, like I said, when we went to live with my dad, we, everything I was crying out for, we ended up getting a video game, clothes, this, that, and the third, all playing the, sports. All the things you all, desire as all a the, child. Yeah, there we go. Just to sum it, all the things I desired started to come. But I was so ungrateful because... Of when it was coming and where I was at, I, I, Lord, I damn near lost a lot of a, a lot of great blessings and I got a lot of good situations. God set forth for me all the things I wanted. God finally gave it to me, but I was so bullheaded, and you know how stubborn I can be. You're still like that. <laughs> still like I, that. I wasn't. I wasn't able to see even God I, blessing me even, in the midst yeah, of the I, blessing. I have to even tell you now, Brian. Take a step back and look at what you got. Yeah, I, I do like go hard at work. I go too hard that you've to asked for, forward. and you keep yeah. saying more, more, more. Why can't God ain't gonna give you more until you're content with what He's given you? 
and 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 what you saying that now is where I was trying to get at. In Matthew, where Christ has says, where Christ says, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. You don't know what people are going through and what people had to go through to get to where they're at. Say it again. Some people had to go through hell and back to be where they are. That's why those strong Christians, my father being one, you ain't gonna knock him off his square. And if and if you do upset him, you better run for the hills because, like I said, you ain't you ain't gonna get him. But if if you upset him, yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's why I want, I want to be strong like that. Mm-hmm. But as as people and as like a, like I want to say Christians, we we ought to be spiritually equipped. To not be looking at the silliness like that, but just know it does rain on the just and the unjust alike. Good things happen to bad people, just like good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people, just like bad things happen to bad people. But who are we to say that person should not be blessed? You don't know what God's about to do in that individual's life. And why and why do why would we want to stop someone from receiving a blessing who are we to say you know aunt patty she living like x y and z she don't deserve that you don't know what's going to turn that person to god or back to god whatever the case may be so why would why why do we as as people try to play god and and, and dictate who gets what and whom's deserving of what you know, I just said something like that. I went live, I want to say yesterday morning I went live, and I was talking about how people people are so quick to write someone off when they're like, mm, I see them over there sinning, write them off. And I'm like, first of all, you ain't even acknowledging the plank in your own eye because all of us have a plank. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a plank. But then I I said, you can't be so quick to exile people. If you feel like you can't be near them because that's going to draw you back into a sin that you previously struggled with, cool. But you can't exile this person, kick this person out your life. What you need to be doing is praying for them instead of sitting there talking about them and complaining about them. Because I can't tell you how many, and and, and this is just in my own personal life, but I'm going to use influencers so nobody in my personal life feels attacked influencers that i have watched that i have unfollowed for or you know i've watched them and i would see like oh they're believing in this that and the third okay let me withdraw from consuming so much of their content but i'm gonna still pray for them and i can't tell you how it and it never happens overnight but and i've and i've voiced this to you oh i started following so and so again because guess what they said Mm -hmm. oh i started then they every time i've started reading my bible I'm following God. I'm trying to get my life, like I'm trying to get my life in order. And I'm just thinking, and I'm not saying I'm the only person that was praying for them, but it's the people who choose to pray for those people who bring them to God to say, to say what you're saying, I'm to, to get into what you're saying. Because, man, like I said, life is going through my mind right now. Uh, Pastor Harris's wife told me one day in, in Sunday school, we, my dad had us in Sunday school. She asked me, are you your brother's keeper? I instantly said, nope. If Ryan doing trouble. Okay, Kane. If Ryan in trouble, <laughs> Ryan's doing trouble. That's on Ryan to get himself out. But now as I think as a man, and I'm thinking about our boys, to get back to what you were just saying. Yeah. If you see someone doing wrong, you see someone doing bad, what we tell our boys. So you're just going to allow your brother to, to make that mistake? Yeah. You're going to allow your brother to get to get himself in trouble like that? You're not going to be, you don't love your brother enough to tell him what how to, to how do. to get it right getting back to what i said about running like jonah you know these people are living wrong you can do things in love and and sometimes because some of us either got tough love growing up or just don't know how to love it's kind of hard to lovingly tell somebody hey you know maybe you ought to not do that because x y and z and, and maybe you ought to be versed and gone through life a little bit to know how to approach and tell somebody the, the right way to go through something but like Jonah had to do some people don't know they left from their right some people only have some people don't know they're really in sin they're mm-hmm. sinning and they don't know that they they think this is life they think that is the way of life but it takes a it takes a Christian it takes someone in righteousness of the right way to be like hey look 
you might not know, but I want to let you know right. what you're doing is this and, and this God is, loves and this you. Is not to be and confused. I think I'm sitting here to tell you that the way you're living or the way you're going about this situation, this ain't that, that ain't it for you. You know, there is a way you can do this and be in righteousness and be right about going about doing this. But I'm I just you know God put it on my heart to let you know you know I do love you. But the way you are either conducting yourself or the way you're going about living your life or the way you're, you know, doing this, that's not right. There is a way you can go about living and it ain't got to be this way. And this is not to get confused, correction and condemnation, because we are not anyone to condemn anyone anywhere. Correct. Or to elevate anyone anywhere. That is not our calling. Our calling is to correct one another, edify one another, because it, it, you can put yourself in a real dangerous spot where you start thinking of yourself holier than thou, thinking you can condemn someone. Yes, we are called to correct our brothers and sisters out of sin, but we are not called to say, "Ooh, you're going to hell because you're acting like this." That that that's not our place. That is There's not. Old, our I don't place. know. This is an Hispanic in the Hispanic community, but there is one in in uh, the black. Hey, you ain't got a. A pot to piss in and a window throw it out. Who are you to put someone in hell? Mm. You might be the one to prevent. Instead of putting someone there, you might be the one sent to prevent them from going there. Yeah, and this can also get taken back to where we were talking about people being in your lives for certain seasons. Don't don't get so wrapped up on who's supposed to be in your life for certain seasons, but whose life you're supposed to be in for certain seasons to correct them and bring them closer to God as well. And sometimes whenever you're doing this, because... I have some, I have some, as my husband would say, I have some bullheaded friends and sisters. <laughs> I truly do. And sometimes it gets discouraging when I'm sitting here and I'm, you know, I'm trying to lead them. I'm trying to lead them. And all they're doing is going against the grain. They're going against everything. And, but just talking about all this reminded me of Galatians 6, where Galatians 6, 9, where it says, and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And I love scriptures like this because you truly see not only the heart of God, but our own hearts of God knows how easily we can get discouraged and how easily we could be like, you know what? I don't see no good fruits coming out of this right now. Forgetting that a harvest takes time. There's time to plow, to get the soil ready. There's time to plant the seeds. You got to water the seeds. You got to wait for the sunshine to feed the harvest. That you're, like there's so many steps and we live in such a microwave culture where it's just Ooh. always hot and ready that yeah. you expect your results immediately. Nobody that's not how, oven, no boy, that's not how life works anymore more it's not and so and i say i'll also say that because we're talking about trials and tribulations don't be so ready to get out of that trial that you missed the whole lesson within the trial and shout out to kennedy and and my dad first kennedy for sure because kennedy was the one who was there when i i acted a fool and kennedy said brian you're not being that man of god i know you who you are and who you are to ought to be Right, he didn't you, even say you weren't a man of God. He just no, said you're not acting. Kennedy ain't been around me, but maybe two to three years. I don't know how long he's been faith. Just the time he been with me, he knew what to say, and he said, "Bro, don't let your pride get in the way mm. of messing up what's good and what's right." For you. then to follow up, when my dad finally talked to me and got a hold of me, you know, who she telling? <laughs> Nah, not he, he didn't say any of that. He was just no, son. Just telling, I'm certain saying, things go, certain things go on. Don't don't allow your character to be flawed. And and then might and you're gonna get tested. And you might get pulled out of character. Even Moses got pulled out of character. But like I told you, it's not the sin does matter. When you sin, you know you're supposed to repent. But don't. I gotta find the text message where I told you, and how I, because I was just praying when you had told me that and. The way, and it's really not my words, but God gave it to me to tell you this is, and, and, and this is truly because I was reading that morning and just thinking of my dad and Kennedy and, you know, and what my dad had already had told me. But what I texted you that morning was don't let the sin define you. Let what you do after speak louder than what you did. Yeah, I needed that that day. And, and that's so true. I could have allowed my pride to get in the way and we all know the scriptures say pride goes before destruction and oh, yeah. and and the way i was acting the way everything was I, everything probably would have been been burnt down to the ground could have been but 
when Kennedy's told me that, like, bro, don't let your pride get in the way of what's good and what's right for you. And my dad was like, hey, your character, son, you you know who you are and who you ought to be. You can't allow people to pull you out of your character. You can't allow certain situations. Hey, the past is where it needs to be in the past. We it ain't on us to dig it up. What you digging it up for? Unless you unless you digging up some some jewels and some blessings out of that. Yeah, you can you know, we can talk about the past, but we're not gonna relive and stay in the past. If you're gonna forgive somebody about their past, forgive them about their past. If you're gonna forget something about the past, go ahead and forget the past. But don't allow your past, don't allow the sin to dictate who you are and and who you're called to be. Because when we we can end up doing that and we can end up messing up the whole thing, hit messing up the whole situation that we got going for us. You know, we're not Yes, we 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 are sinners, but we are not a, we're not to allow the sin to de- define and determine who we are. We're supposed to be like, you know what, Lord, I repent, and out mm-hmm. of this repentance, I'm gonna go stronger than I was once before. I'm gonna get better, Lord. Yes, I did mess up, but you know, and actually, Christ gave us the module on how to pray, uh, the the Lord's prayer, Our Father who art in heaven. You know, you address the Lord. You know, we're not supposed to be. You know, blame. Um, we, we we can live a blameless life. We can get to the perfection, but when we are sinning and when we are in the wrong, we're supposed to say, "Lord, forgive, forgive me," as I learned to, to forgive others. Yeah, you got to learn to forgive yourself and get and get them steps back in going in the right way. Because I mean, you can beat yourself up so much, you can end up staying in a rut, and that's not where God wants you to be ultimately and you can't allow your flesh getting back to the first two concepts you can't allow your flesh and what you know is right and wrong to dictate and determine you to be stagnant and be in one place i I messed up definitely lord help me get back to where i to be as i learn to be better for myself and for the others that are around me and like i said i say a lot of things and i think i can i'm really good at controlling my tongue when it comes to the way I speak to others until it comes to the things that I say over myself. Now that's a season and that can keep, And that can keep you in seasons because one thing I was reminded of is be, like when I say y'all, it's been a hard half a year for me. It's been a yard, hard half a year for me. And I was talking to my sister on the phone today and I said something about complaining and she was like, stop complaining. And I, she, she was like, and I was, she was like, when are you going to stop complaining? And I said, when things start to go my way, and she said, well, what if things never go your way? And I was like, well, then I guess I'm not going to stop complaining. And in that in that moment, I had to repent because I was reminded Amen. of Israel mm-hmm. when the Lord mm-hmm. took them out of Egypt and why they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And God told me, how long are you going to allow yourself to be in the wilderness because you're so uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. How, so are you just going to remain in the wilderness and remain uncomfortable because you want to complain instead of asking me, what am I getting out of this? And this, and this is where I was getting at with the pride. And that's kind of prideful within itself. We can say, you know what? No, pity me. Oh, whoa, it's me. And yeah. Be like, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to do this until I get what I want. Oh, so you, right. ra- you rather stay in the rut. Mm-hmm. Then fix yourself and get out of it. Right. And that just, and then it took me back the way my mind works. Cause you know, my mind is weird. I'd be on different train carts 24 seven all at the same time. And so then I was re- taken back to my read and write the word from this morning, which was Philippians four, um, six through nine. And I was just like, you know what, Lord, you're right. I need to focus on the good things. I need to focus on the things that are true and what's true your word. And what does your word say about me? What are your promises to me? And that's how simple you can pull yourself out of that. And that's why it's so important to meditate on the word. And that you you were talking about foundations earlier, not only the foundations that you stand on, but the foundations where you plant your seeds. What, what are those? You know, you can't just be this, um, this convenient Christian. I'm going to go Sundays and Wednesdays because that's convenient for me. And then forget about it every other day of the week. Right. And I feel like even though I was in his God's word every single day, I was kind of being one of those. You know, I was only meditating on the word when I was in the word. And that wasn't only but once a day. And so I, 
yeah, it was just, it was hard. And so, yeah, you're never going to learn how to get out of those or how to change your mindset without focusing on who God is, what he promises you throughout these seasons. And to be honest, that's what's going to be, that's going to be what carries you through your trials and your tribulations is for one, allowing God to remind you who he is, because when he pulls you out and you're on the other side of this trial, he's going to be like, I told you I was who I said I was. And my word says I don't change. I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. Nothing has changed about God. We change. We change our minds. We change our hearts. But God's not like that. The scripture says, for my ways are higher than yours. Mm-hmm. That's God speaking. It's Isaiah. Yes. The Lord, we, we can never fathom why and understand why certain things happen the way they and, and go about the way that they go we don't know the lord's plans in certain situations i mean lord i'm thankful that you pulled one of my parents you know and put them in your love and your grace you know mm-hmm. and my mom's gonna get there eventually you know everyone's gonna the scripture say you know everyone's gonna confess you know and every go, knee shall bow not just that everyone's gonna choose scripture says choose, choose you this choose day. you this day who you will serve everyone's gonna choose who they serve whether it be you choose to serve man over God, whatever your advice is or whatever, you know, it takes. Speaking on my life and me being a man, I just thank God it was my father because now I have someone. Yeah, because that's you needed that. You're a male. You needed that. I Definitely. don't think. And, and me as a mother. And there's, I'm, a lot of, there's a I'm, lot I need. Yeah, Ronald McKinnon will tell you, boy, boy, you got a problem with authority. And you choose to go to the military is going to be the right thing for you. And I'm that's thinking, why I think. I'm thinking, man, you don't know what you're I'm getting out of this house. Yeah. And I'm saying that. Nah, I did need, I did need respect for authority. I, yeah. I needed to learn order and structure. And, as a, and, and as now a, I love order and structure. You done? Yeah, I'm done. And, and then, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was about to get mad. <laughs> oh. And as a and as a mother of sons, I can say that like I at a certain point, there's not going to be much I can do for my sons. There's going to come a certain point where all I can do for my sons is show them the example of the type of woman that they are to obtain in life, mm-hmm. that they are to bring into their life. You, you can lead them. Yeah, I can lead right, them, but I can but, only lead them in so many areas. Right, and and it is on me. I mean, like my dad is now. At one point in time, he was the authority. The authoritarian over my life. Now he's just my advisor. I mean, he's my father still, but he knows. Okay, Brian, you're a man. I remember one time we were talking. I said, no, "I'm still your son." He said, "No, nah, son, son, you're a man though. You know, you you gonna make your own decisions now. Yeah. You know, it is it is on you. I can advise you in anything, and I'm gonna lead you, you know, into the way that the Lord ought, ought to, you know." order your steps not the way the lord ought to order myself but what he was saying was you know i'm gonna lead you the way in which the in which god would want you to go but as your father son the best thing i can do is be your advisor and i'm thinking about the kings uh in chronicles where you know uh one of the king i can't remember which king it was he had the elders to listen to but then he also had his friends to listen to and he chose to listen to his friends Friends, but the elders had let him let him know like look don't don't go that route because you know your father was this kind of man and the people you know will see you to be a great and good king if you go this way but he chose to do what you know what his friends say nah put the snakes on him you know make him work you know my father taxed you this hard i'm gonna tax you even harder turned around to bite him you know in the end of the day but my dad has been a great advice not only a great father to me but now he's a great advisor to me because I mean, he he helps me even when I'm wrong. Hey, look, nah, uh, 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 you know better. Get on the knees, pray, and then you come back and talk to me. And you tell me what you, what you. After you done prayed, after you done read, you tell me what you think God uh, wanted. Uh, you tell me what God ought to have you do. Don't tell me what Brian want to do. You tell me after you done prayed, after you done spent some time in the Word. You tell me what you think God would have you to do. And if that lines up with what you want to do, you can't allow this, what you've gone through, Brian, to break you and determine for you to go off the rail. Shout out to Brother Richard, too. When I when I was when I was contemplating getting back in into 
into street life and <laughs> wanting to act a fool again. I'm telling brother, it seems you, like that's so much easier at times. Or then, yeah. or then you can look out the quick and be dollar, like, and, and yeah, that's or, just or the vice can, in the yeah. lust of the eye. The quick dollars right mm-hmm. there. Just jump in. You can jump right back. Or out. look out at those who aren't living life for God and be like, man, but their life seems so good. Whole time they in the darkest days of their life. Exactly. I remember a cousin telling me one time though, and and this got so real. And, and for anyone, like I said, I, I I pray everyone gets saved. But anyone who lives that fast life, understand. For some people, that's a twenty four seven. That's on your kid's birthday, your mama's birthday. That they some some there are some people out here that the Lord uses that are on the on the wrong side of things. Those people, as evil as they are, they don't care about your birthday. They come to get they stuff. They come to act a fool on your kid's birthday. Coming to run up in your house. They don't. They don't. Yeah. They don't have no respect of person. So when you live, the scriptures say. You can't eat at the table of devils and the, at the table of the Lord. You can't, can't take do up both. the cup of the Lord and the cup of evil. No, you can't. And and when you do decide to stay on the left hand side, I mean you going you gonna reap what you sow on that side. Mm-hmm. There ain't no dibble dabbling, jumping back and forth. Man, that's what I've been trying to teach the boys. You, you, like, you either boy. you either are of this cut of cloth. Or you're of the other kind. The, the scriptures say God hates a lukewarm person. Spews you out of his mouth. You can't you can't ride the fence. Purpose purposefully. You like I said, we all gonna sin, we all gonna we all have some correction to do. But you purposely doing this, doing that, and back Knowing and forth. Knowing and saying, Ah, oh, God will forgive me. Yeah. Romans eight. Romans for anyone who thinks that you can live in sin and and then say, and I'll read it right now, because I always give it out. But right now, I think I ought to not read be this. conformed to this world, but no. be transformed, or no. present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm-mm. You gonna know it. You gonna know it because I'm not like you said earlier. I'm not. I don't want to mess this up. But you gonna know it. <laughs> you gonna know it right as I said. Therefore, not there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death keep going Mm -hmm. for what the Lord for, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit pause you can't walk in the flesh you cannot you cannot live a sinful manner doing wrong in the flesh and say that you're and say that you're of the spirit walking in the spirit but that's that's what I was getting at you you can't live that way you can't straddle the fence you're either in or you're out and yeah. then and then if anyone says oh brian you're you're just pulling context you, you not reading it out of, you're reading it out of context i'm gonna read this last one and hopefully this lays the foundation for what i'm trying to say okay. and what i did say romans 6 says this what shall we say then shall we continue mm-hmm. in sin that grace mm-hmm. may abound certainly that's not. verse one verse two says god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3 says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death? Meaning when he died right, and and for our, sin, for our, our sins, sins, when we got baptized into we died his... We in the same likeness. Yes, we died to the same likeness that he died to. We are not, in, we are not to construct ourselves in a sinful matter anymore verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in a newness of life now yet again it's going to take some time. It's going to take some correction for us to get it right. And 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 some people probably think, man, I keep going through the same season. Maybe God's trying to show you something. Man, good movie. I used to love this movie as a kid. Color Purple. 
Maybe God is trying to show you something. You wondering why you tossing and turning, wondering why you can't get it right. God's trying to give you the answer. When are you going to listen to what he's trying to tell you? This is why I say you you never you're never too far gone until you're far gone, but it's never too late and you're never too far gone to get it right. Yeah. As long as long as you're striving for that. You you got to want that. God been knocking at your door. When are you going to answer it? But you can't you can't eat from both tables. Nope. You can't live both lifestyles. It mm-hmm. just it just don't work that way. And, and that's why some of us go through the same seasons. Maybe it's not every year, but it it sure does. Life sure does have a uh, what we call deja vu. Man, I'm going through this. You're wondering why five years later in in a new relationship, you're going through the same troubles. And it's because you didn't learn what you were supposed to learn in the previous season. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Right. Like like I've learned to uh, understand, at least for me, everyone else might look at it different. I either win or I learn something. I don't lose because I think e- both are winning in a, in a sense. If I'm not winning, I'm learning. I'm not because I I learned to not allow myself to be put in that same predicament again. And if yeah. I do, I know how to maneuver and I know how to go about, you know, life in that aspect. If I get put in a jam, a quote unquote jam, if I get put in a certain situation that I that isn't doesn't look fruitful for me, whether it be on the job, whether it be in life, whether it be whatever. And if it's my first time going around it, and let's say I get out of character, let's say, you know, let's say uh, my flesh or, you know, the devil, whatever the case may be, let's say I get it, that situation gets the best of me. I learned something now. I learned something about myself. I know where I need to equip myself, get myself better at. And also, I just learned never allow yourself to get put in that situation again. And if you do, these are cert- these are the certain outcomes from going through this. Be prepared for this. Be prepared for that. Understand this is what this was. And I'm not saying it. it's like a cheat sheet, but and it might not happen the same way again. But it is on me to never allow myself to go through those accusations or those wrongful doings ever again. And if I do go through it again, I better be prepared for, you know, whatever the outcome may be, because I Life is really about choices. Like I said, the scriptures does say, choose you this day who you will serve. It is really about what, you, what, what, what do we choose to do? Whether whatever circumstances we're faced with or whatever we're going through. I mean, God God gave us the, the grace to choose, mm-hmm. the love to go ahead and choose. And even when, man, me, 25 years, I chose to do the wrong thing. I chose to do the wrong thing. And he sat there and waited for me. And even now, seven years, as you know, I'm thinking, man, Ethan's seven years old. I've only been walking this walk for seven years. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, a lot of the older men, yeah, going on eight now, a lot of the older men like, nah, I wish I was where you I'm, I'm looking at I that. Know. I wish I'm where y'all were. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate like... the you old heads telling me, and forgive me, any, anybody older than me ahead. I appreciate y'all. But I, I never I, I understood see, that when I people... I see where y'all are, and I'm like, I hope to be where y'all at. Yeah. I, I see all the knowledge, all the all the love. I hope to I hope to love not just my own family, of course, but others. I see my dad just go out in, in public, and he love on people. I see Brother Richard go out in public, and he love on people. I, I see Brother Pete that. go out in public, and they just instantly just... It clicks to love on people. Even when but people are, even when people are trying to set these men up and do them wrong, they choose to love. But that's you. I can't say I do that all the time right now. Say, but that's you too, and you don't realize it. I mean, we have that little playful dis- disagreement all the time of like, you just so dang friendly. Why are you so friendly? Like, that's you too, and I think that's more of a man thing because I, I, I can't. That's why I, I just, it, I ain't built like that. I'm not. Cut I have it from to an extent. I, I don't. I lose it. When I notice people are out for me, yeah, you quickly are not going to get God. No, and, and like I said, that it's not that God would have me to be bullish or foolish and not understand my surroundings and my environment and just be gullible or or, or uh, you know susceptible to you know to a fall or to be set up. But when I see a setup coming, man, I get 
I get the ears pit back, pinned back like the pit bull. I'm, yeah, and I'm again, about to box, that, I'm about to box my way out of this. Yeah, and again, that goes back to the beginning. But and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm right for that. Not to cut, not to cut you off. Sorry, I'm not trying to say I'm right for that. But that is that is something of myself that I do. Okay, I was gonna say, and that just goes back to whenever we were saying when you're learning these about seasons and relationships seasonal relationships i guess you could say in your life this goes for friendships intimate relationships to even acquaintances it's good to have that discernment of okay when is it time for me to cut that cord in a sense because some people will take and take and take and take without ever even offering the opportunity to fill you up just a little bit and that's just not how a godly relationship in in from any standpoint should work no, at all, I, I and I agree with what you're saying. If you're the only one pouring, if, if correct, if you're if you're the big cup and you're pouring into this little cup and the little cup runs out, you just keep pouring out of your big cup and the little cup never shares because the little cup. And, and, I, and I'm saying, not that it's wrong to fill up the little cup, but Brian and I have this saying: I'm not trying to help anyone who doesn't want to help themselves. Correct. So if the little cup isn't digging for themselves isn't trying to fill themselves up at all because it shouldn't just you should flow unto others so they can flow unto others and that's how that works in essence but it the dynamic of the relationship matters too you got to remember paul and timothy's relationship paul was like a father to timothy so paul probably poured into timothy a lot more than timothy ever poured into paul but when timothy did pour Paul did acknowledge it and it made him feel great about himself. Mm-hmm. Like, man, Paul, or t- man, Timothy, hey, keep keep it going. Yeah, you remember your mother, you yeah. remember your grandmother. Man, you on the you on a roll. Keep it like you got to encourage the younger in, in in the faith. You can't just be like, I'm pouring, I'm pouring, I'm pouring. Give me a sip because maybe they don't know how yet. No, you, you, I, you I take get what it you're to saying. an extreme of where I'm like, give up, give up on people immediately when they don't pour out. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Because just a few or some minutes back, I said, it's going to take time to see that harvest. Yeah. But at a certain time, you should see those fruits. And that's great. That's why I say, that's why I started off a while back. And I said, sometimes as Christians, we are believers, whatever you go by, those who follow the word. That's why sometimes we we deem to cut certain relationships off if we're not getting set gratification correct and that's because of our self and of our flesh we feel like so then we end up doing rather than understanding you know like i said not every relationship set up every, there's different paradoxes to relationships but if you understand the relationship between you and an individual and if you feel like you're just pouring and pouring, you're not receiving anything back. How do you know that that really that? How do you know that God hasn't set you over that individual to continuously pour in them? How do you know that you're you're not that person's not, not their saving grace, but you're the one who's helping them and encouraging them in their walk? Correct. But you're right. You should see a change. And you should see some growth. You should see the fruits start to blossom in that person. You should see, oh, look. They, and, but I give you an example. If if I was your mentor or whatever the case may be, and I said, and I've been telling you, Ali, hey, you know, the lifestyle you're living. No. Hey, Ali, going out. You have a son. Mm, maybe you should. No. And then one day I see it's a Friday night. We're leaving church. And uh, a group of individuals approach you as you're getting ready to leave, and they go, "Hey, girl, um, next next weekend, do you want to go to Blase Blase Blah with us? You know, we just can go out there and you know hang out, have a good time. You know, and you go, you know what? No, I'm not really gonna do that. You know, I'm really trying to break away from that kind of life. You know, it's you know, I, and plus, you know, I, I need to be there more for for my son." The, what I ought to do is, and I'm gonna say applaud you, not because it's not about worshiping the individual, but worshiping and gratifying the choice that that person made. Hey, Sister Ali, I acknowledge what you just did, and that was a great choice. Keep it up. I know it's hard. Encouragement. 
I know that was hard. I know those are your friends. Yeah. But what you're going to do is going to be beneficial in the long run. Yeah, this this life ain't for the easy because if it was, everyone would be doing it. But I appreciate, and I appreciate, but I love the choices that you're making and, and just keep your head up. Put yourself around some stronger women, some older women in the church and, and keep and keep the walk going. That's what we ought to be doing to correct, one another. Correct, correct, correct. You know, and, so, and sometimes some, 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 some of the people in the faith are way more advanced than other people. And they, I'm not going to say they don't have time. You ought to make time for the young ones, but the gap is so vast, it's hard to correlate these people grew up in this time frame and you got people growing up in a in a whole new world it's kind of hard to mend those but if we're the two yeah but if you're colliding the two with the scriptures and you're showing and and you're showing them and molding them man it becomes it comes a whole lot easier a whole lot easier i don't know what's wrong with my mouth tire (laughs) (laughs) it becomes a whole lot easier because the older women according to scripture the older women they ought to love to teach the younger women how to become a woman. And that's hard. Not, because, not a lady, but a woman. And that's Titus too. But as someone who is one of the younger women, you tend to get a lot of the older women who look down their nose at you. When I was your age, yada, 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 I didn't have help doing. It's just hard generations. And I feel like our generation is a lot of the gen- the the generational curse breakers Mm -hmm. and something i said is like it's hard to be the generational curse breaker because nobody broke those curses for you right you're having you don't have a blueprint you don't you're having to learn how to break those curses and guess what even after you're like oh i'm breaking this curse you're gonna turn around and do something and be like i thought i thought i broke that and that's hard because if our if the older women were doing what they were supposed to be doing we we we'd have a blueprint and not to say that it would be verbatim exactly the same but we could have some kind of outline i mean it's beneficial when you come from a family that you have the your elders who follow the scriptures to yes. help you but that's why I love the chapel that we're at right now. I mean, the the older the elders, the women, whether male or female, they they help. I love that at the chapel. No matter what gender it is, male or female, the elders look down and they're not frowning or and, look upon and look upon. upon yeah. Right, upon they're, is a better word. They're 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 there for guidance and and help. And instruction through whatever it is that we go through and even the peer group and the peer group doesn't necessarily mean the age that the individual is but those who are like-minded like you those who uh and those who encourage you those who have the same walk not the same walk but the same lifestyle the same mindset that kind of peer group those who are like-minded in certain ways that they're there to encourage and help one another and that man, that's that's a beautiful thing within itself. Rather than you know taking what you had in the world and bringing it in the church and still thinking like, man, and that's why a lot of people run from the church. It's like I could have stayed out in the world for this. People was looking down upon me out there. Why I come up in here and the same thing is happening. So that's why certain seasons, even for you know a, a beginning Christian. It's just, it feels like a reoccurrence, like a deja vu from something that was in the world. The The world treated me like crap. Now I come to the church and, Ooh, and, and one believers thing, are, are trying to treat, treat me like One thing I had to learn is people still make their own choices no matter what calling they have on their lives from God. Correct. It doesn't matter how high they have put themselves on that stature, pastor, deacon, they're still susceptible to sinning just like us. Mm-hmm. And that's not to justify what they did. I'm saying that for you not to, if this has happened to you the way it's happened to me, um, or maybe you do in the future face this to understand that's not a representation of God. That's a representation of the person. That was a hard pill for me to swallow when little old Allie had only been in her walk for three years. But ultimately, like I think the root of it all like I say, is 
I think in the first the first podcast I said solitude is good because getting away from the masses, getting away from people, and just nose diving into who God, reading God's word to know who mm-hmm. who God's call you to be, what God's call you to be, how God is, you know, leading and instructing your life. Once you get back around people, the people won't move you to act a certain way or go or think about a certain thing like I think about public school it's it's like a fashion contest it's about a popularity contest it's about who's in who's out imagine if school was school right and not everyone was I mean yeah you got the interaction you got to you know socially gather and you know Mm -hmm. you know go about being a social individual you know know how to socialize with people but if it wasn't about look at what i got look at look at who i am and the status of the school look at who you're not because i mean after after that i mean i feel like corporate america the workplace is exactly the same thing people hold their titles look at who i am look at who you're not if we took the time to just you know what i'm gonna get along with god and i'm gonna understand who he's called me to be I'm going to walk in the truth and then the light of what he's called me to be. And within that solitude, when you come out of it or, you know, if you choose to. And this is why I understand why John the Baptist did what he did. But once you start to come around the mass again, you know, you're not going to be worried about who and what they think of you. You're allowed to, if that's your opinion, you know what, you know, so be it. Okay, cool. But your opinions don't move me. So, And, and, that, and that's cool that, you know, all right, cool. That's what you think. But. That's what you think. Don't make you don't make you right or anything in that. But like it's today was a it was a whole new wave. I usually don't read scripture, but I did tell myself uh, within uh, looking and you know understanding what this this episode of the podcast was going to be like. There was a, one scripture that I did want to read, and it's further down in Romans. It was Romans eight eighteen through 26 and i'll read it real quick now i'll go to romans 18 through 23 8 18 through 23 it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of god for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected to the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now verse 23 now and not only they but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groaneth within ourselves, waiting for the adopt for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. That that one came to me with those who struggle with the depression, the anxiety, and the things of this body. You know, some people harm themselves and things of that nature. This is a flesh. This body will decay it will go away we will be given a a glorious body as that scripture says and some of us i remember when i first baptized i thought man okay it's gonna be over here now i can just die and go straight to the heaven and Mm -hmm. and, and some people do groan and moan and, and, and wait for that moment but within that we do have a a fight that we ought to be fighting we there is work that ought to be done faith without works is dead so we know that there is a time that we will get this perfect resurrection, this perfect, you know, if I mean, and that's if God chose, we don't know what God has in store. We don't we can't we can't say it will be us or, or not. But if we are striving for it, we have hope, as the scripture says, for that body. And whenever we do get that, that uh, glorious body one day, that's a beautiful scripture to end on. And it's. It's a big part of the gospel that I don't think is um, emphasized enough is that it's for 
he's waiting patiently. Even through your discipline, even, even through your discipline, your, 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 your trials, seasons, your, your trials, your tribulations. And so one thing I want you guys to take away from this mostly, like I said, Brian and I are two very different mindsets. So for those who have a mindset like me is allow yourself grace. You're allowed to break. Just don't stay there. Allow God to put you back together and heal you. But you're allowed to break. Don't feel like you have to do it alone. We were never called to do this alone. Even if you're the strong friend. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm shooting a shot at myself. Even if you're the strong friend, strong sister, you're allowed to be weak. For in your weakness, he can make you strong. But as long as we keep trying to be strong on our own, then what would we need God for? And you never know, sister, brother, whomever, you might have been strong for this individual for God knows how long. But when you're weak, you don't know the strength that you poured and all that you poured into them. They might turn it around and help you out of whatever season you're in. Mm -hmm. You might have poured so much into them that when it was time for you and you did break and you were like, whoa, it's me. Whoa, it's me. That individual was right there crying to, hey, let me help you. Hey, let me help you. You're not doing this alone. I am here for you. I want to help you just like you helped me. So even for the strong ones out there. You never know. You might have poured so much. And my father, man, uh, yet again, you ain't never going to hear me stop talking about my dad on here. Because <laughs> he done poured so much in me, so much into me. And Brother Richard, too. They done poured so much into me. It, I, it, it does me good when I talk to them like, man, Brian, I just love talking to you. I love where we can go on our conversations. I love to see that you're growing in this. I love to see that you are, and they say, yeah, you're pouring back into me. I, man, you're seeing things I, I didn't even think of. Man, that, mm-hmm. now I got to go back and read. And then they got something for me. And and I love it. But, but staying on topic. Thank you. You, <laughs> you, you never know. You might have poured so much into someone. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you're the strong one. You might not know. You All of that was for when you got for when it your was season, time for you to be poured into yeah when you, it was time for you to be poured into that individual was right there so don't be like ah oh, it's been three years I've been pouring into you when you gonna give back don't do that don't do that don't be that person keep pouring scripture says it's better to give than to receive keep pouring keep giving do not lose heart keep giving even then when giving gets too hard keep giving mm-hmm <laughs> And as Brian would say, and as he has said, you're not too far gone to say yes to Jesus, to allow him in. Don't expect the changes overnight. Don't expect any blessings overnight. Just, it's, it just simply starts with the, I want to know you more. There's two things. I didn't get to do my ad on this one. I, I have been practicing at, on it at work, too. That's why, because it was inauthentic. That's I'm just true. kidding. That's true. <laughs> Anyone who saw the other episodes, those ads were just, it just yeah. happened we were going through a break or a phone call or the kids. And we came back on the mics, and I, I just queued up an ad to get us back into the conversation. But man, I, I had a good one for this one. But uh, that was one. But two, most important. This is why I said it for last. It is twelve fifty-five here in Texas in the morning. Twelve fifty-five a.m. It is now February sixteenth. It is my lovely wife's thirtieth birthday. They call this the Dirty Thirty. This is our third podcast too wow three three (laughs) i would love and i'm glad to have this opportunity to share it to the world happy birthday ali nicole mckithen i love you keep growing and being a great wife a great mother a great mentor a great lover i just love you and i am thankful that god gave me you i'm thankful that god gave us the hearts that we have the parents that we have the trials and tribulations that we have in one another to go through these things to be better. I thank you for just being who you are. Thank you. I love you. I'm not going to say don't change because (laughs) do get better. Please be better. Get better. We all should strive for being better. But in your ways of your character, your love, and how loyal you are, don't change those. Be who God's called you to be. 
I just want to say, babe, I love you and happy 30th birthday. Thank you. And remember that we love you guys, but Jesus loves you more. It's 2911 podcast.